I'm going to go over submix busing and auxiliary busing in a DAW. They're the two most common types of busing you'll use in your DAW, and they have their own typical applications and uses. I'm going to do a demonstration with Reaper, but it doesn't really matter what DAW you're using because the principles are the same and any DAW can do this. Okay, I'm going to bring out some award-winning and very simple drawings I did so I can explain the fundamentals of each type of busing. Okay, this is a submix bus. These are your tracks over here. I've got four tracks. This is your submix bus. This is your master bus. And this is your signal flow right here. And the arrow indicates that the signal flow uh, is going this way. Now, the important thing to notice here is that there's only one path to the master bus. Uh, signal flows down through the track here, down through the tracks processing, hits the fader, comes over to the submix bus, hits whatever processing is here, the fader again, to the master processing fader. If I were to mute the submix bus here, nothing would make it to the master and you wouldn't hear anything. I just want to be clear here that each of these tracks would have the same signal path as this track. I just didn't draw them in because it would get kind of cluttered and confusing. Now, when would you actually use this? The typical use is for drums. These would be your drum tracks over here. And typically there's more than four. Let's say there's eight or ten. You'd route them to a submix bus. They'd get summed. Then they'd hit a compressor. Then they'd go to the master track. So why would you use a submix bus for this? One reason is that it affects your processing order. Now you're going to put a compressor on your drums. If you don't have a submix bus, by default, these are all routed to the master bus over here. Without the submix bus, you'd put a compressor on probably this track, this track, this track, this track. The order of processing would be compressor over here to the master bus, summing, and then out. But if you have a submix bus, the order of processing would be summing here at the submix bus, then compressor. So what you're doing is you're flipping around the summing and the compressor. Now I suspect this changes the sound. How much? I'm not sure. That's probably a blog post I'm going to do up the road. The second reason is for resources. If you had 10 drum tracks here and you put 10 compressors on them and your compressor is a huge uh, resource hog, uh, your DAW is going to start choking. But if you use a submix bus, you just have one compressor. The third reason is for management purposes. If you use a submix bus, this is controlling the level of this, all these tracks over here. And so if you want the drums to come up a little bit more in the chorus and, and then fade them down a little bit during the verse, you just have one fader to work with right here. Okay, let's look at a auxiliary bus. This is the same setup as before, your tracks, auxiliary bus, master bus. With the submix bus, you remember there was only one path to the master bus. With the auxiliary bus, there are two paths. Because as you can see here, the signal comes down through the channel strip, and then a portion of it gets sent through what they call an auxiliary bus send. So it's sending to the auxiliary bus. A portion of it gets routed over here to the auxiliary bus, processed, and then it comes back and it's summed together and then it goes down through the master bus. And this other path is a direct signal to the master bus. This is the same type of routing you would have if you set up no buses at all because all of your tracks when you create them by default are set up to route directly to the master. So when would you use this? The typical use for this is when you are adding reverb so for example, you have three tracks here. You want to put a little bit of reverb on each one of them. Or maybe you want to put a lot of reverb on this, medium amount of reverb, reverb on this one, and a little here. So you control this by how much you send, how much signal you send through the auxiliary send here to the auxiliary bus. And then over here on the auxiliary bus, you have a reverb set up to 100% wet because you don't want any dry signal You've already got a dry signal coming out through here, so the auxiliary bus has 100% wet reverb, 
And you control the amount of reverb on each track by how much you send over here to the auxiliary bus. What's nice about this is once you dial this in by listening, this send, and you've got the right amount of reverb on this track, this track, this track, and they're probably all going to have different amounts of reverb. Uh, once you've got that dialed in, if you want to change the reverb on the whole mix, you simply just pull this down because this is controlling um, all the reverbs, several reverbs that are being sent to it. You would just pull this down a little. This could be nice if, you know, during a chorus, you want to make it a little drier, a little wetter. Also, you might throw a compressor on the master bus and suddenly realize, hey, I've got too much reverb on my, my mix. Well, instead of going in here and tweaking, if you had individual reverbs on these tracks, you'd have to tweak each reverb. But since you're using this auxiliary bus setup, all you have to do is pull down the fader a little bit. Uh, the other thing that's nice is, um, this isn't as true as it used to be, but reverbs uh, can use a lot of processing. Uh, they can be pretty resource intensive. Instead of putting reverbs on the individual tracks, and let's say you had 10 tracks that you wanted to put a tiny bit of reverb on, you just put one reverb over here, so that would be one-tenth of the resources uh, being used. Also, I'd like to point out that um, just like with the submix bus, the order of processing is different. If you put individual reverbs on each one of these tracks, the way that the signal would flow would be it would hit a reverb, and then, because we're not using an auxiliary bus, it would go to the master bus and get summed. So reverb, summed. If you use an auxiliary bus, signals come out of the auxiliary send here, they get summed, and then they hit reverb. So it's flip-flopped now. Again, I suspect this will change the sound of things. Uh, I just haven't done any tests to determine how much.